personal finance practice problem using Excel. Life insurance calculation tools, part number one. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. Information on the left, calculations on the right. As we've seen in prior presentations, when we think about how much life insurance we need, we can approach that calculation from many different angles. We can use many different calculations. We're gonna look at some tools and try to put those tools in isolation so that if you wanted to customize your own kind of calculations to fit your personal needs you might be able to put these tools together in a future presentations we will put them together in a comprehensive problem the second tab is a practice tab that has some pre-formatted worksheets so that you can work through the practice problems with less excel formatting the third tab is a blank tab where we will be putting this together in essence from a blank tab we've got the data on the left hand side if you don't have the data you could just add the data so if you had a blank worksheet you could just select the whole worksheet i would start by putting the underline or baseline formatting down right clicking on it format the cells I would go to currency, brackets, and negatives, and then no dollar sign and no decimals. That's usually my underlined starting point. I'm not going to hit OK, but just X out of it because I already have it set up here. Then add your data on the left-hand side, which is good practice for a practice problem, and make the skinny C column. Then we're ready to go. So the information on the left-hand side, we've got the wages, we've got the earnings rate, We've got the years. We're going to say that the college costs that we're going to be saving for will be 40,000. The kids age that we're going to save the college costs for is five. And then inflation, we're going to say is at the 3% mortgage. And we've got our mortgage information down below. So this is just some tools we in, in practice. If we were doing a really formal kind of uh, calculations for life insurance, we'd want our whole budget and whatnot, and possibly some of these tools so that we can piece together our thought process on how much might be needed. So now we'll use these tools to, for a couple different approaches on how we might calculate life insurance. Now, first of all, you, you've got the component of life insurance that you might be looking at for somebody that would be dependent upon you. So if you were the wage earner for the family, for example, you might be saying, well, I, I would like to basically have my, have my earnings potential to be supporting people for some amount of time the first method would be like a generic type of method based on your wages for a certain time uh, period and so we've seen that in a prior presentation so we could say we could say well my wages for 10 years you know this would be like a generic kind of calculation we might say okay what i would like to do is say i'm going to go to the home tab font group make this black and make this white and then I'm going to say, okay, if my wages are 60,000 equals the 60,000. And so there we have that in the years. We're going to say 10. Now this year's calculation, how many years might you want this to, to cover? Uh, that's, you know, will depend on the circumstances we could use, say, we could say, well, if the child is five, we could see how many years it would take them to be 18. We could use a generic number anywhere from seven to 10 is kind of a generic number of just, you know, a standard rubric or uh, type of number that you could basically use a recommended type of number um, or a heuristic type of number, if you will. Uh, or we could say, how long would my working years be? Or we could think about how many years it would take for say my spouse to reach retirement, for example. So those are some kind of count you might count, you might tie it to the mortgage and say how many, how long until my mortgage is paid off and basically say my income will be sufficient until that point. I'm going to use a generic 10, just the generic 10 here. So the insurance needed and we'll calculate this out. So this is going to be the 60,000 times the 10 and that's going to be the 600,000. Now you might take some fraction of that because you might say, well, I'm not going to be there. So I won't have any of my particular costs and the 60,000 that I'm earning possibly covers more than simply the necessities. Meaning I might, I might, you know, that if we were trying to say, I need life insurance for the necessities, I might say, okay, I'll take some fraction of that. I'm going to say percent, 70%, 0.7. And this is a, a heuristic type of number. We're going to say seven. I'll put an underline here. 
uh, font group underline. We'll put an underline here. And so then we're gonna say insurance needed will be the 600,000 times the 70. Now, so you could use the 600,000, right? You could use the times 70 to 420. You can also, depending on your circumstances, you might say, hey, look, I've been making commitments to the mortgage and whatnot based on my income going up, right? I've been quite aggressive. We've got a mortgage based on the idea that my income was gonna go up. So you might, you might say, this, this 60,000 isn't enough. I should try to index it upwards because I was counting on my earnings potential going up and I've, I've committed myself possibly to debt payments uh, in alignment with that increase in wages. So it kind of depends on your circumstances, of course, but this is the first kind of heuristic kind of method. You can also use a similar method where I'm not gonna look at the wages side of things, but I'm also, I'm gonna work, look at instead the expense side of things and try to calculate what the expenses that we're having, or at least the cash flows that we'll have which might include some debt calculations. Now notice that once we have this, we could of course tack on other kind of things that we would need to be saving for, such as possibly if we wanna have the spouse's retirement that we're gonna to contribute to, or possibly college, uh, or possibly a parent that would need, that would need help at, in their later years possibly, or something like that. We can add that on top of this calculation. So this is one component or one piece or one tool that we can use in our overall uh, calculation or you can use it at, in and of itself. So I'm going to go ahead and, and make this blue and bordered and let's take a look at another way we might see this here. If you don't have that blue, it's in this little color wheel standard. We're using that blue right there. And so another way you might see it is you might say, well, what would be nice is if I can have enough in an investment if I was to die so that they can invest it in a stock market or something and get earnings equivalent to my to my wages so that's a much more aggressive kind of strategy right so i could say well how much how much life insurance would they have to get in a lump sum so that they would get sixty thousand a year on average from it if they were to just invest it and get an average of a five percent uh return we're going to say five percent yeah earnings of five percent so let's think about that we could say okay i'm going to make this skinny c i'm going to go to the home the home tab and, and make a format painter and make that into a skinny F over here. And so I'm gonna say this is gonna be the earnings, earnings on life insurance proceeds that we'll call that. And I'll make this a little bit wider and I'm gonna select these three and we'll say home tab font group. Let's make this black and white. And so we could say, okay, what if what if I died and we had life? This is how I would normally think of it. You could you could adjust the, the math, but I usually would think, well, if I had the life insurance proceeds, it was a little algebra calculation, and I was to get earnings per year of 5%, earnings at a rate of 5%, I'm gonna equal the 5%. I'm gonna percentify that cell by going to the home tab number group percentify it let's underline it font group underline then the annual earnings i'm trying to get the annual earnings to be sixty thousand, right equal to my wages so how much would they i need in my life insurance if they were to invest that to basically get sixty thousand? if they were going to average five percent earnings on it so we could do the calculation like that. We could say, okay, it's basically an algebra calculation. I could say, well, this would be equal to the 60,000 divided by the 5%. So that would mean 1,200,000, which is obviously a lot more aggressive <laughs> than the 420, because you're trying to basically say, how much can I get in a lump sum? I'm gonna recalculate it so we could do it this way. So we could check our number. I'm gonna go over here and say font group, and let's underline it and go to the number group, percentify it, and then multiply this out. This equals the 1,200,000 times the 5%. And so there's the 60,000. And that 60,000, if, if they got 5% on it, would always you know, be in the principal as well, which would, be, which would be nice. So if that was doable, then that's another calculation you could look at on more of a high end, of course, calculation. We're going to say font group do it this and we'll make it blue and bordered 
Now, of course, you could just adjust the algebra on that too. You could say, okay, if I had uh, earnings on life insurance proceeds, and I'm looking for the unknown, I'm gonna make this blue and bordered home tab. Well, not blue and bordered, I'm gonna make it black and white because it's a header, it's a header thing. So you could say, okay, my earnings that I want, annual earnings, are 60,000 and that and the rate that I've got on the earnings is 5%, 5%. And so I'm just working the algebra here. We're gonna go uh, number group, percent, underline it, font group, underline it. And that would give us our life insurance proceeds or insurance needed, let's say. Insurance needed would be equal to the 60,000 divided by the 5% once again at 1 million two. So let's make that let's make that blue and bordered. I'm going to select these. I'm going to go font group and border blue on that one. So then you might say, well, they don't really what I'd like them is to be able to get 60,000 per year for for basically 10 years. So I could do this calculation, right, to get to the to the 600,000, but uh, really, if they can earn, if they can earn 5% on it, then how much would I have to get in the life insurance for them to be able to, to pull out 60,000 a year for 10 years, right? So that's a different kind of calculation. It's going to be a little bit lower than the 600,000 and certainly lower than the 1 million two. Lower than the 600,000, lower than this. So let's try that. We're going to say, okay, well, what? that's too much life insurance for me. Let's try Let's try another calculation. So we're going to go to the home tab. Uh, let's format paint this and make a skinny J over here. And skinny J. And so this time I'm going to say, let's use our present value calculations. Present value. We're going to take into consideration time value of money because I'm going to make this K a little bit wider because that'll help us to, to take into consideration the earnings. So in other words, what I want to look at is say, well, if I had the 60,000 for 10 years and it was an annuity of 10 years, what would the current value be at current time period, uh, which would be the life insurance proceeds that someone would need in order to get 60,000 annuity payments for 10 years at a 5% return. So let me see if I can explain that. We'll say, okay, Let's do a present value calculation, which would be I started with a negative instead of an equals present value shift nine. And let's say we take the rate. So we're going to say that it's going to be five percent comma. And then I can't see I can't see it's the number of periods is the next argument. The number of periods is the next argument, which is 10. We're doing the generic 10 here, comma. OK, and then it wants the payment so it's an annuity we're looking at because we're looking at a series of payments of 60,000 for 10 years that we want a present value that comes out to 463304 okay so let's think about that so we're going to say let's say that and right here I'm, I'm let's say that we're doing this with I'm going to put the rate down here just so we could see it the earnings rate is 5% that's what we're basing this on Let's make that 5% right here. Number group 5%. Let's make this, I'll make this one black and white. I'll make this one blue and bordered, bordered and blue. <clears throat> and let's make this one black or blue and bordered, blue and bordered. Now let's see if we can understand that a little bit more. So we'll say, okay, how does that work then? Let's take the skinny J and make a skinny M going to take the skinny J home tab format paint it make a skinny M and then I'll do my little calculation to, to see how this is going to play out so I'm going to say year earnings earnings decrease or this let's call this the payment payment amount or or balance let's say balance probably better Okay, and then I'm going to select these these up top. We're going to make that black and white home tab font group, making it black and white, black and white. Let's center it to alignment and center. Let's make this a little bit skinnier, skinnerizing it, thinning it up. It needs to thin it up, thin it up. 
zero, one, two. We'll bring that down to 10 years. I'm gonna select these three, use the auto fill handle, put my cursor on the auto fill handle, drag it down to 10. Drag it down to 10. Let's center that, home tab, alignment, and center that out. And I'm gonna say, okay, if I start off with my balance here of the 463, 304, if I died, and then I got 10 years of payments that are gonna happen, that means that they're gonna get payment. Let's put the payments here too. I'm gonna say payments are gonna be equal to the 60,000, just so we have everything right next door to our working process we'll say that's going to be sixty thousand. okay so the earnings then on the first year is going to be that 463 if they if i died and they got the 463 304 put it into the to some investments and like they got earnings of five percent on it then they would be earning 23 165 and then they're gonna take out 60,000. I'll make it a negative. Instead of equals, I hit negative of this number. They take out 60,000. So that means the prior balance plus this earnings plus the negative number, which is minus the negative number, is 426, 469. So let's do that this way. I'm gonna say the prior number plus the sum of these two and close up the brackets okay and this earnings number this five percent is outside of our table so that's an l so i want to make that one l3 absolute because i don't want it to move down when i copy down so i'm going to select f4 you only need a mixed reference but this is an absolute reference and that will do i'm going to hit enter we'll select these three i'm going to select the fill handle and drag that on down drag it down and, and oh, hold on a second, problem. This 60,000 also doesn't, we don't want it to move down. So I gotta fix that. I'm gonna select, double click on that one. That one needs to be absolutized. So I'm gonna say absolute reference F4, dollar sign L, dollar sign five, enter. Put the cursor back on it. I'll just double click the fill handle button this time and bring that on down. And you can see it goes down to zero, right? So the earnings, go down each year because the balance is going down but the earnings help us out to maintain that sixty thousand uh per period that being the idea so that so that now we've got this 463 to try to maintain that that income of the sixty thousand that we're earning over 10 years again we can add other kind of methods or calculations on top of this like college tuition retirement helping out for a parent or something that might need help in the future or something like that but this is our starting point that we could do this way 600,000 420 if we just take like 70 percent of that trying to estimate what the actual spending needs are of it we could try to calculate the actual 1,200 for them to earn 600,000 and have the principal of the 1,200,000 which would be great or we could try to have this annuity calculation that we could think about now let's let's do another kind of we could we could get a little bit do another one let's let's make this border blue font border and blue now you might say well that's great but like each year here uh you would think you would think that that they need less they need less money right because uh if they if i'm estimated that they only need money for 10 years because say the child is grown or that was my full working years and then they're going to be in retirement or something like that then i would need you might think of a life insurance that you could tailor and basically say i would like it to be higher during this point of my life and then basically go down possibly as as we get uh, the needs go down at least for this this portion of the life insurance for the income structure you could you could tie it to how long you're going to live how long how long your working career was your how old your child is or something like that but you might say it, sh it should be going down as i get closer to retirement or whatever that goal is and you could see that happen here with this calculation right you could see it kind of going down and so you could say well if i'm if i'm doing it out here four years out maybe i only need 304 542 at that point and you could try to tailor your life insurance to kind of possibly move down as you get closer to that end goal whatever is the 10 years out 
You might do this calculation another way, which is a little bit more simple than this table, although I think this table is really easy to look at. So let's just do that calculation another way. If I, and we'll use our time value of money to practice that. I'll put my cursor on column M. I'm gonna make that, that uh, we're gonna copy the formatting and put that here, lay it down on R. And let's say that we just have the years and then the, or let's say insurance, insurance needed. Let's make that black and white. We'll make that font group and black and white. We're gonna center it, alignment and center. And then I'll do the same thing here, zero, one, two on the years. Select those three, auto fill handle, copy it down to 10 alignment, center it. I'm gonna make column S a little smaller. So there we have it. And then what I'll do is the calculation for a present value calculation that we could kind of copy down here. So I'll start off with, in essence, the same present value calculation, but we'll use our tools so that I can copy it down. So I'm gonna say negative instead of equals present value, shift nine. Now, first we need the rate. The rate is gonna be this 5%. And I, I don't want that to move when I copy it down. So I'm gonna select F4 on the keyboard. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute one works. Dollar sign before the L and the three. Comma, number of periods. Here's where, where we get a little bit fancy. What I wanna say is, is 10, because we got 10 periods, but I wanna be able to copy it down. So what I'm gonna do is say, I want this 10 and then minus this one, whatever this is. And then I don't want the 10 to move down because that comes out to, to 10, obviously 10 minus zero. If I move it down, I want it to be 10 minus one or nine, 10 minus two or eight. So this one, I don't want to move. This one, I do want to move. Therefore, S12, that cell needs to be absolute. So I'm gonna select F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the S and the 12. And then I'll say comma, and then the payment, the payment is going to be the 60,000, 60,000 here. I don't want that to move down. So I'm gonna select F4 on the keyboard. So there is that, I think that does it. Let's close it up, enter. So we got that same calculation we have over here, but now we can copy it down practicing our, our, our present value calculations, copying that down. So then you could say, okay, if whatever goal I have after 10 years, they only need this happening for 10 years, I might be able to say, can I buy some kind of life insurance, a term life insurance, for example, that basically tapers down uh, per year based on these calculations or something approximating them so that you might be getting a more reasonable you know, policy that covers the needs that you need. So in future presentations, we'll continue with this and we might say, well, that's fine, but the 60,000, maybe I wanna like, uh, increase that for inflation and consider this 5%. So we'll think about that. And then we'll also get into how we might think about other things that we could tack on top of that, such as retirement help for our spouse or something like that, college savings that we could tack on top of it, uh, for example. And we might use our mortgage, for example, in multiple different ways that we can, we can work into our life insurance calculations for, and these are just tools, remember, that we can then fit in to whatever calculation we think is the most appropriate for our particular circumstances. So I'm gonna then select these. We're gonna to go to the font group. I'll make this uh, bordered and blue. So just to recap, this one part of the calculation, which would be the cash flows that you're trying to support someone with who, who might be dependent upon you, you can base it off of the wages or possibly you could try to base it off the expenses instead of the wages so that you could try to figure out what the actual costs are that are being covered as opposed to the wage calculation. You might do a generic calculation that would then get say just multiply times 10 years. You might try to take a percentage of that, 70% of it, for example, to cover just the actual needs that are there minus you in the picture. Uh, or you might actually say, I need to increase that due to the fact that I've taken on a lot of debt because I'm hoping my income goes up. And if I die, then I've, I've kind of made some, some estimates that it would go up and that might not be the case. You could try then to base, once you know what that cash flow is, you could try to say, well, well and, and it, it, you could get it, whether it's gonna be based on your income or expenses, you could try to say, well, how much could I invest in order to get a return 
of that much money to cover and that would be that would be nice because then you'd have the principal and the earnings on it which, which they could basically live on and that and that would be if they continue the five percent they could continue getting that each year which would be great uh, but that would be a lot higher of a value of course you could also say what if i did this annuity payment and say whatever however you based the calculation whether it be an expense calculation or based on the income you could then say well what if i think about that annuity stream and they get a kind of a return on it then you know how much would that lump sum have to be at the point of death and then you can also of course think about how it might be affected over time so that you could think about possibly tapering down the life insurance which could make a more affordable uh, life insurance that hopefully could still cover the needs